Hello, this is a presentation for parents on how to report incidents related to culture and identity for secondary families. When I refer to secondary schools and families, I am talking about middle and high school students, grades six to 12. My name is Lorna Gilmore, and I am an equity and family partnership specialist with the Isqua School District. The objective of this presentation is to provide parents information on what does the school do to support students in middle and high school in reporting incidents? To whom and how to report incidents related to culture and identity? Provide information on follow-up from school when the incident is reported. Inform parents on what they can do to support their child. And also provide parents with definitions of terms such as racist remarks, bullying, harassment, and intimidation, and other resources. The Issaquah School District believes that a safe environment is essential to high student and staff achievement, to the free exchange of ideas central, to a quality educational process, and to the development of youth as thoughtful participants in our democracy. Conversely, uncivil conduct, like other forms of disruptive behavior, interferes with a student's ability to learn and a school's ability to educate its students. The Issaquah School District strives to maintain a learning environment where all students, staff, and members of our community can be free from intimidation and harassment. One way we foster such an environment is by informing students and employees, as well as parents, of their personal rights. We explain proper behavior in schools and what kind of behavior are inappropriate. The district's regulation on harassment, sexual and otherwise, support our high expectations for proper behavior. Please take a moment to review the summary of Regulation 3205 and 3207, which protects students. Those regulations will be on the resource page at the end of this PowerPoint and linked on the website. How do schools support students? The district. One of the things the district has is an equitable co conduct policy, and that is for all of our students. The policy is available for all students and parents to access on the student handbooks that all middle school and high schools have posted and provided to their students. This is an example of the Issaquah High School Student Handbook. And if you look through the handbook, you will find the equitable conduct policy towards the end, um, along with the safe and positive environment. The Issaquah School District values equity, diversity, and inclusion. The district is committed to building and sustaining a welcoming school environment, a community. A district and community are made up of people of different backgrounds, needs, and perspectives. Our learning community includes people of varying races, ethnic backgrounds, abilities, disabilities, religion, ages, socioeconomic status, immigration status, sexual orientation, gender expressions, or identities. Student expectations include respect each individual, even if that ind person's identity is different from your own. Seek to understand your impact on others while seeking to understand others' intent. Communicate respectfully with others in person on social media and in other form. Use what you're learning to use good judgment and make ethical and informed decisions. Take responsibility for your words and actions. We all have the responsibility to report behavior that interferes with having an equitable and inclusive learning environment that honors and respects people of all identities. If you become aware of any action that violate the expectations above, we encourage you to speak up through one or more of the following ways. Tell a staff, tell a teacher, a staff member, or other trusted adult immediately. If you are comfortable and safe doing so, speak up in the moment to encourage more equitable and inclusive talk or action and or support those being hurt. Report it anonymously via the Issaquah is tip line. Be sure to include details such as names of people time, location, and building. The school administration, along with staff, review the school policy at the start of the year. 
The handbook also contains many other policies of the school building and the district and can be found in the student planner and the school website. How the school will review these policies will vary per building. It could be an announcement, advisory, or homeroom classes, or other classes. Uh, school administration administrators will also discuss it at curriculum night with parents. Teachers. Teachers review procedures with students, and they will also remind students about the school rules and procedures throughout the year, usually after each break. It's always a good time to remind our students. Parents, parents are asked to review the school policy at the start of the year in September, and also parents are asked to review and sign off on the, the student handbook as part of the enrollment verification process in August. Again, the school handbook can be found on the websites. Also, the school handbook is all, information is also in the school planner. So here's an example of the Pacific Cascade Planner. And within the planner, and this is the planner portion that's available online. And in the planner, all of this information, there are definitions available, policy information, all of this information can be found uh, for the students and provided at the middle school level, spe level especially within their planner. So here is a school, school district information. Um, informa the information also includes some definitions, student conduct and discipline information, classroom exclusions, suspension information, and we have uh, definitions available. Behavior agreements, harassment, intimidation, bullying, and non-discrimination policy. In addition, the in the advisory or the homeroom class, in the SEL class, at the middle school level, the social emotional learning curriculum called Second Step Bullying Prevention Unit is taught at the middle school levels in grade six to eight. So what do school counselors do? Since many countries do not have school counselors and also the role of school counselors may depend on the country, the district or the state, here's some information to help you better understand the role of school counselor in the secondary schools in the Issaquah School District. A school counselor may conduct school-wide trainings for staff, provide classroom lessons for students and learning opportunities for parents. They will identify or they help identify students who need help. They might provide those students individual and small group counseling. They will help families support that student, work with teachers to support classroom success. They will connect students and families to community resources such as food, scholarships, and mental health resources. They also meet and discuss academic options, including post-secondary options at the middle and the high school level. The school counselor is also the 504 coordinator at the school. If you're unfamiliar with what a 504 plan is, please check on those uh, links listed in this presentation to learn more about a 504 plan, or you may contact a school counselor about a 504 plan. More about the role of school counselor as it relates to social and emotional support at middle and high schools. One of the things we want parents to understand is that Talking to and using a school counselor for support is not a stigma. School counselors are here to support students in school. They, they, they help support students to help them overcome challenges and barriers to achievement in school. They work with individuals and small groups of students in teaching social skills, such as making friends and resolving conflicts. They work with students about, about managing feelings. They meet and talk with students and parents about social emotional concerns. Along with a PBSES coach in the middle school, counselors teach the social and emotional curriculum. Look in the video description below for the link to the video, Role of Counselors and Their Role in Bullying Prevention and Student Support at Secondary Levels. The video is created by Stacy Clausen, the counselor specialist for middle and high schools in the high school counselors in the Isqua School District.
All middle and high schools in the Issaquah School District support students by reviewing the policies, including the prohibition of harassment, intimidation, and bullying yearly for all students in the school. It includes defining harassment, intimidation, and bullying. The review also discusses the academic and social, social and physical impact of HIV. Schools strive to create a safe school community by teaching students and providing them with resources on how to report incidents, who to report the incident to, and often it is to the principal or assistant principal. They also remind and teach students how to take action and stand up for each other. It's done throughout the year. It's dependent on the school, and but in middle school, as I said, there also is a social emotional curriculum that is taught in the advisory social, social emotional class. That is called the second step curriculum. It is a problem solving conflict re resolution, how to navigate relationships, how to participate in creating a safe school environment. It is taught usually by the PBSES coach and counselor and it might have components taught by the advisory or the homeroom teacher and components by the dean, assistant principal or principals, depending on how they present it. So it will vary in, uh, by the school sometimes, especially at the high school level. So what is racist behavior around culture and ethnicity? Behavior or language that makes a student feel unwelcome or marginalized due to race heritage, culture, religion, or other identity factors. It's when a student is teased or targeted or made fun of for their hair, their skin color, their name, their accent, or their facial features. Sometimes students may be excluded from groups due to their race, their religion, or their identity. Or students might be made fun of for their dress. Maybe it's a sick turban or hijab or other clothing. Sometimes students are made fun of for the types of food they're eating at lunch or a casual snack, such as rice, curry, tofu, noodles, or pasta. Microaggressions. Uh, microaggressions are comments or actions that subtly and often unconsciously or unintentionally expresses a prejudiced attitude towards a member of a marginalized group, such as a racial minority. That's as defined by Merriam Webster. Some of the examples of racist remarks students might experience, such as sometimes our African-American students might hear the N-word, uh, Asian students might hear the C-word. Sometimes the African-American or African students hear the uh, phrase yelled out to them, go back to Africa, or an Asian student uh, having someone yell out, go back to China. Sometimes our Asian students might be called coronavirus or Wuhan virus as you're hearing on the news and the media um, around. Sometimes our Hispanic students hear students chanting, build a wall, or maybe a Hispanic student or students from other countries might hear the phrase, you should be cleaning my house. Here's an example of microaggressions that students have faced. And here's an example of the different, some of the different, um, different terms or words used towards them, comments made towards them. So who is doing this? Any student could be doing this. And there is a misconception that uh, any student might be the alleged aggressor. There is a misconception that only white students are doing it towards students of color. Racist incidents, bullying, and unkindness is not always one race toward another race. Incidents of ra Asians being unkind or picking on new Asian immigrants are reported. Incidents of full blood, Indian, Chinese, or black students picking on students that are biracial or multiracial or vice versa have also occurred. There have been incidents of Asian or European students towards blacks or Hispanic students. So again, any student may be the alleged aggressor. Class, socioeconomic level, religion, privilege, and power all play roles in such incidents. Sometimes it is unintentional, uneducated, and uninformed behavior. Intention versus impact is discussed with students when incidents happen. 
At the ISD, schools will work with students to correct such behavior and teach about civility and kindness. To whom to report the incident? As Stacy said, students are thought to report the incident by the process starts in the school counselor's office. The school counselor, they can find out who the school counselor is via the planner, it's divided by alphabet. Also, they can talk to uh, assistant principal. If the school has a dean, they may talk to them. They may report to a classroom, in, classroom teacher or a specialist. They can talk to a professional, a bus driver, a custodian. Truly, a student can report to any trusted adult for help, and that adult can help them continue and report the incident. Parents, same for you. You can report to an assistant principal, you can talk to a school counselor, or you can talk to any trusted staff member at the school, including the building principal and teachers, and they can all help you with reporting an incident. Sometimes parents report something after it has happened multiple times, and by then, they're very upset and frustrated. It's not a blamed, it's not about blaming for sure. It's that the school, the teacher and the counselor, we wanna make sure, they wanna make sure that they are aware of the incident. So it is important that students or parents have reported the incident so that the information is available, that has been reported, the school is made aware of the situation and, and steps can be taken to resolve the situation. Washington State and the Issaquah School District have clear definitions of harassment, intimidation, and bullying terms. Many behaviors that do not rise to the level of harassment, intimidation, or bullying may still be prohibited by other district policies or building, classroom, or program rules. Report the incident so that the school is aware of the concern and can address it. Links to the bullying resources and the Issaquah School District HIB policies can be found below, along with a link to the Issaquah School District form to report incidents of bullying, form 3207F. A link to the video by Stacy Zakow, the Issaquah School District Harassment, Intimidation, and Bullying Compliance Officer is also available in the link below. It provides more information and details on the district's harassment, intimidation, bullying policies and procedures. Behaviors and expression. It can be very hard to distinguish if an incident is a one-off example of unkind, mean behavior, or a pattern that is bullying behavior without details and background information. Every situation may be unique and is treated as such by the school administration. Harassment, intimidation, and bullying are separate but related behaviors. Each must be addressed appropriately. Although this procedure differentiates the three behaviors, this differentiation should not be considered part of the legal definition of these behaviors. Harassment refers to any malicious act which causes harm to any person's physical well being. It can be discriminatory harass harassment, malicious harassment, or sexual harassment. Intimidation refers to implied or over threats of physical violence. And bullying refers to unwanted aggressive behaviors by another student or group of students that involves an observed or perceived 
power imbalance and is repeated multiple times and is highly, un, uh, is highly likely to be repeated. Bullying may inflict harm on the targeted youth, including physical, or it creates an intimidating or threatening educational environment. Bullying can also occur through technology and is called electronic bullying or cyberbullying. This information, along with the definition, the Washington State definition is for school district definition, is available on the school district website under family resources, bullying resources, and it also provides a lot of information on cyberbullying. So what can parents do to help their child? What are some proactive strategies you can take? To start with, talk to your students. Ask them about their day. What good things happened at school? What was something not positive or good that may have happened? Ask specific questions like, what was lunch like, the bus ride, or school class like? You may get one word answers right now for many of the preteens or teenagers, but be sure to show interest and not give up. Discussions. You might want to have discussions like, what, did they, what would they do if someone was being mean to them or bullying them at school? Encourage your child to be an upstander, a supportive bystander, and help them understand the difference between tattling and reporting. The bullying prevention curriculum does talk about that and teach children about tattling versus being a supportive bystander. Model empathetic behavior, words you use to talk about people of other races, and be aware, be aware of your own prejudice and your own bias. What can parents do to help their child be pro, be, help their child, more proactive strategies? Talking to your child about race is one of the great supports and uh, we encourage, the school encourages all families to talk to children about race. And here are some resources on the district website for secondary level students, as well as for parents and caregivers. It also includes elementary school books to read with your child. Talk to your kids about kindness and embracing differences, not to be colorblind, but to recognize differences and, and talking about being anti-racist. Show cu curiosity, learn about other cultures, read and watch counter narratives, discuss unkind or bullying behaviors when reading books or watching TV shows. Use these as learning opportunities to ask students questions such as, what would you do? Do you know someone who has experienced this? Who would you talk to if this happened to you? If you saw this happen to someone, how would you help them? Sometimes there might be warning signs that a child might not report. So if your child is experiencing unkind behavior or potentially being bullied, he or she might remain quiet out of fear, shame, or embarrassment. Warning signs may be vague and some may mimic mental health issues. So be on the lookout for lost or destroyed clothing, electronics or other personal belongings, abrupt loss of friends or avoidance of social situations, poor school performance or reluctance to go to school, headaches, stomach aches or other physical complaints, trouble sleeping or, or frequent nightmares, changing eating habits, distress after spending time online or on the phone, abrupt avoidance of electronic devices, feeling of helplessness or low self-esteem, and self-destructive behavior, such as running away from home. Monitor your child's behavior and check with the child's school counselor if you have concerns. So what can parents do to help their child when the child does report an incident? The most important step is to listen to the child and validate the child's concerns and feelings. Get details, ask questions, so that you can get the context of the incident or incidents, the names of the students or adults involved, where and when it happened. Consider if the problem, uh, consider if it's a problem the school needs to address. How can the class teacher, the school or the counselor address the problem? Does the behavior need to be monitored? Is it a big problem? Is it a minor problem? Ask your child to help you determine how to help them. Can he or she address it on their own? You can be a coach, a mentor, if your child is not willing to have you get involved, but find out more information. Has it been going on for a while? Monitor after, monitor after your child has reported the incident. 
do you need to report it? Is it impacting a student, the student's behavior, academics, et cetera? How? Depending on the age and the incident, either have the student report or you may have to report the incident to a school administrator via an email or a phone call. Parents can also fill out an incident report mentioned by Stacy. Don't expect the child to solve the problem on the, their own. You may need to intervene and to monitor. Cultural components. We recognize that in some cultures, it is not acceptable and it is considered problematic and the parents might wanna avoid being a, a problem, causing trouble at school. They might be afraid of retaliation and repercussions. They might want to, sh to shush the situation to, to ignore it out of fear. Some cultures and parents are fearful of reporting to the school and the consequences of it. We want to assure you that our school district wants to hear from parents. And if you're unsure because you're new to the US school system or to the Issaquah schools, please talk to a school counselor or family partnership liaison or I other ISD staff member and ask for help. Please feel free to call me. Call and email a school principal, an assistant principal, or a dean of students student, if you have questions or you're seeking assistance. Include the teacher if the incident is happening in class so they are aware of the concern. For major incidents, parents should contact the school administrator at the high school level, an assistant principal, at the middle school level, a principal, assistant principal. You're always welcome to contact the principal and assistant principal. If you have concerns or email or file an incident report. Parents can encourage students to report to a trusted adult, but again, you're always welcome to follow up with a report or help the child report, model the behavior, teach them how to do it. And the link to the form that Stacy had mentioned on reporting, again, is on this page. So response by the school. What happens after you have reported? The school administrator will talk to interview the students involved, including witnesses to the incident. That's one of the reasons why it's very important to get this information from your child or for your child to provide this information to the, to the administrator. Give details of when, who, and where, if possible. The administrator will review previous incidents by student or the person who engaged in the bullying or the incident, the alleged aggressor. They will implement corrective measures after an investigation, and the response will depend on the unique situation, including if the claim was false. Depending on the severity of the incident, corrective measures may include counseling, education, discipline, or a referral to law enforcement as appropriate. The response will, be, will depend on several factors, including the incident, the age of the student, the history of the behavior, and other factors. All responses of incidents are confidential, including from the parent of the child reporting or the parent reporting, including from other teachers and other staff, unless they need to be involved in the corrective action. So parents are not connected with other parents in the incident. No public apologies are required by the school and the consequences of the incident are kept private and confidential. If your child was the complainant, the student does have supports, so be aware. So if your child was a complainant, the reporting students, please check and find out what the supports are because they could include check-ins with a counselor or with a teacher or with an administrator or trusted adult. Retaliation by the alleged aggressor is prohibited. Retaliation of any kind is prohibited. Students and parents are informed about retaliation in the handbook and often in discussions about consequences for the behavior. So the parent role after a child re reports an incident is to check in with a child, ask if the situation has improved or resolved, and continue to monitor and check in with a student, the school administrator, a teacher, if appropriate, and the school counselor. Here are some resources that we mentioned throughout the presentation, and we will keep this page updated as we post it to the website. Thank you very much.